again. Well, in the last video, I talked about half-ton trucks and their towing capabilities and the kind of balance between a travel trailer that hooks to the back bumper and a fifth wheel. Is a 1500 truck really capable of pulling a fifth wheel? There are a lot of people that basically say, why? Why would you want to pull a fifth wheel? Well, in my case, I have a truck that I love. I love this truck. And because I bought it as a total loss, I got a lot more truck than I could really afford. This truck, I paid $17,500 for it. It was a destruction. I rebuilt it for $10,000. It's completely loaded. It's basically a $63,000 truck new when I into it $30,000. So I really want to keep this truck. It's got everything, options, everything that I would want in a truck. So the travel trailer that we own, it's a bumper pole. It's got a thousand pounds on my back bumper. It's fully equipped, load all the gear in it. It matches the truck rating. Uh, the load capacity, the amount of ability that this truck has to tow, no problem. But as soon as I started talking about doing a fifth wheel, people are going, ooh, that, that truck's not built for a fifth wheel. The ratings on fifth wheels when it comes to their load and their the pin weight, the trailers that I'm looking at, uh, in my last video I talked a lot about those trailers, they're actually less weight than the trailer I'm pulling now. And because it goes up over the bed, it's a good five feet shorter, but it's the same length overall box, the living space. So weight wise, it's the same. Pin weight, it's just a little bit heavier. So why not? So I bought one. So now I need to convert this over to a fifth wheel. And I really wanted to do a gooseneck style fifth wheel, like this one. The gooseneck style fifth wheel that mounts underneath the bed gives you full capabilities of being able to use all your bed with nothing in the way. Take the pin out, reverse it, put it in, your whole bed is restored. The other side of the, the, the hitches has the two rails and the hitch sits on top of it. That hitch you have to take out, it's heavy. Well, the pin stike type that is mounted to the floor, you also have to have some kind of a gooseneck that you mount on the trailer. Well, with that in mind, what does that cost? What does the pin type cost? What's the difference with the fifth wheel that mounts to the bed? How do you get in and out? How heavy is that? What do you have to have on the trailer? <laughs> There's a lot to think about. It's nice to be able to have the full bed when you take the hitch out. With the hitch that mounts in the bed, you've got the two rails. They're a little bit obstructed, but they're not too bad. So, comes down to cost. Um, and what is the ability of the actual fifth wheel? Well, the fifth wheel that I ended up purchasing, the pin rotates. Why, why did they put a rotating pin on the front of this trailer? So I, I was thinking, I bought it used, so I didn't really have the dealer to be able to, to discuss all this with. And then talking to the dealer about the fifth wheel, $3,000 to have them install one. It didn't really matter what type. They were all about the same. I'm not going to pay that when I can do it myself. I can get all of the pieces for right around 600 bucks. Now, when it comes to the pin type, that's right around $600 just for that piece. So then do you put a tripod on it? The tripod, then how does it mount to the fifth wheel? Well, I started reading a lot about those tripods and there's, there's some negatives about that one. One, it's fixed. So where the pin drops, it's, that's where it is. You can't have a sliding hitch. So they're pretty much designed for a full-size eight-foot bed. This has a six-foot-four bed on it. It's not really designed for that. 
you really need to be able to have the capabilities of moving that in the bed so that when you're maneuvering, you don't hit the back of the cab. So then I'm thinking, wait a minute, if the manufacturers of these hitches specify to use a sliding hitch because the beds are too short, how does that work with the pivoting pin? Well, the pivoting pin, that's what it's designed for. It's designed for short pet trucks. So come to find out, with the hitch, the pin is a cart, the hitch I could buy is a cart, it's fixed, it's fixed to the floor, the pin stays frozen to the hitch, and the fifth wheel pivots around the hinge, which is a good two feet back. So it, it changes all the dynamics of how you, you, you tow that fifth wheel and how it is hooked to the truck. So that's by far the cheapest way to go, to have a fixed piece in the bed with the fifth wheel, slide it into place, and it pivots around the pin that is already on the fifth wheel. So it, it's just the perfect fit for me. So how about putting it on with the one that mounts in the bed? How do I get it on a frame? You gotta attach it to the frame. You can't just attach it to the bed. So I start looking at, well, what mounts to the frame? I've seen them where they have universal brackets that come down from the bed floor. You weld it to the sides of the frame, you're done. I've got a welder, I can do that. But there's a lot of horror stories about weakening the frames with these weld on brackets if you don't really know what you're doing and how you're welding and how you're tying that into the frame. So I just decided I don't even want to mess with that. Why risk it? There are some really cool brackets for 200 bucks that are custom made for these trucks, for the GMC, the Fords, the Chevys. They just bolt right on and they're engineered and designed for that. For 200 bucks, why not? So then what does it take to get all that in there? and get it all mounted. <laughs> well, that's what we're going to do today. <laughs> so I already started tearing my truck all apart. I started putting the brackets in and then found out I can't get the rails. The rails, for whatever reason, they're out of stock. They were on back order. I got the hitch. I got the brackets. I got everything but the rails. It all came in. It took about a week and the rails are sitting in a dock somewhere. So until they show up, I can't finish. But for now, with all that said, let me show you what I've done so far, and then we'll start looking at how to get those brackets on the frame. <laughs> well, in order to have simplicity and make it as easy as possible, you got to pretty much take everything out of the rear end of the truck when it comes to the spare tire. My truck has full wells, fender wells, it's like the limited edition. So those have to come out. These other little wheel wells that are in the back end of each fender, those are even on the standard trucks. Those have to come out and the rear tires. Once, oh, also, these are the heat shields for the spare tire. Once all those are out, then I'll show you what we have to do in order to get those brackets in place. So looking through the instructions on this Kurt mounting, frame mounting, no need for drill, no need for weld. Uh, it's really quite simple, especially on this side. I have full access to the chassis on this side. Uh, so it's just a matter of getting everything to line up. And then where this mounts onto the frame, these are the two holes that go up through the bed and then the base rails, the bed rails, mount to these two holes. So I was thinking I need to be able to adjust this side to side, but the way it mounts onto the frame and there's a cross member on the bed, there's really no adjustment this way. So I'm going to have to nail it. <laughs> I gotta be dead on with those rails when I drill through the bed. So I'm going to have to really make a lot of measurements and, and try to be as precise as possible to hit those. 
I'll probably start by getting them dimension, drill a little pilot hole, an eighth of an inch pilot hole, see where it comes through, and then I'll just have to hog it out in order to line that up. But overall, I'm very impressed with this kit. In order to get these carriage bolts through the frame, you can't get to the back side. So it's a pretty ingenious idea that they came up with. These little wires thread on to the bolt, the carriage bolt. Once that wire is secured, then it's just a matter of bringing it up underneath the frame through a access hole back here in the back and then feed it up through these two holes. Now this is the part that that cradles that cross member. And this width is smaller than this area, so you gotta go up and under and around in order to get to the narrower part of that cross member. And then it sits on this edge, which is really nice. But it does have a little bit of play once I get it up in there. I've got maybe a quarter of an inch of movement, so that's gonna be great. So once I get this positioned, I'll tighten it down, and then once I drill those two pilot holes, if I am off a little bit, I'm going to be able to adjust it, so that'll be nice. I might even be able to get to the holes from the back side of the frame, and I can get a, a chisel or a punch to indent that. Hopefully I'll be able to see it from the bed. Just enough movement once I get everything just kind of loosely in place I'll be able to come down through the top and then once I get that rail across the top then I'll make all my final adjustments and tighten this down and then I can go to the front because those two rails need, need to be precisely equal distant apart so this bracket then I'm going to have to have adjustment to be able to get the space between those two bars. So this front bracket tucks up inside of there and I've got another hole here that I need to be able to use a wire and a carriage bolt. There is no access to the back side anywhere here, but luckily this just slides inside that way and then having the wire, I'll be able to hold that in place. And then this position, in order to cradle all the way around to the back side of the frame, it has this big U-bolt. And then that should secure this nicely. Just a few through and all of this That is a tight, tight fit. There is no adjustment here, so hopefully I don't have to hog anything out too much to, to grind away any of those holes and get things to line up. I gotta hand it to the guys that created this for Kurt Manufacturing. I'm very impressed. Well, on this side, 
I'm, I'm trying to get this bracket up and in and inside of there. And this U-bolt has got to go on the back side of this frame. Uh, one of the warnings on the instructions is if you have a skid plate, that has to be removed. Well, I have that skid plate down there under my tank. So this bracket is what holds the skid plate in place. That has to be removed and it's tight up against the gas tank. And there's two bolts on the back side there and one bolt down there. <laughs> so I've got to climb underneath the truck and see if I can get that brace out of the way. So here's the bracket that's in the way. Uh, this bottom bolt I just loosened up just enough that when I took out these top two bolts, right there, that will allow me to kind of tip this back out of the way, and then I can run that big U-bolt right up behind it. Can't quite do it while I'm filming, so let me get that up into place, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, there you can see it now. It goes up and around there, and then I can hopefully lift this bracket back into place. Look at that, bolt back down. Those guys knew what they were doing. All right, well, I was successful getting underneath the truck and getting just enough impression with a punch to set a spot so I could <laughs> drill through with an eighth inch bit. Uh, once I got that eighth inch bit, I was able to come up here on top, drill down through with a step bit. I was correct that this dimension should be 28 and 7 eighths and it's three eighths of an inch off. So had I have drilled there, I would have been hitting that metal bracket. <laughs> and then I would have been drilling another hole. So yeah, double check all the measurements if you can. It's, it's tough underneath there to get an accurate dimension from here back, but I was able to get it just enough to know that it was going to be off. And luckily I was able to punch through from underneath. So now I just need to have to figure out where the rest of these go. And I can use this dimension now to set that side so I don't have to try to do it from underneath. Double check and make sure I'm centered this way. So it's not quite as bad as I thought. I'm an eighth of an inch off. So I'll just oval this hole out an eighth of an inch and then I'll give me exact measurement where I need to be there. And then because I have this, this stand on, then it'll tell me exactly where I need to put the front one. And just to be sure, I'll get underneath and double check my measurements between those brackets because there's not a whole lot of movement under those brackets. So really doesn't matter, I guess, because I'll have to oval those holes out if it doesn't line up. It's just really the only choice. So I'll start with ovaling these out and then I'll work my way around. Depending on the options of your particular RAM, if you have air ride suspension, um, some of these bolts interfere with the airlines and the canister and, and other parts underneath. So you'll have to see in some areas you'll use a regular hex bolt and in others you'll use a carriage bolt. In my application, carriage bolts work all around on this one. So I'll be able to go underneath and mount it down. And because of the ribs, they have these little wedges that you'll put underneath the spacer so you don't crush these ribs on the bed. And it would have a tendency to work loose if that was the case. So get that little U-shaped spacer in there and then you can torque these down. So start out by just finger tight everything and then we'll go back and torque it all down. It calls for 110 pounds, uh, foot pounds of torque. So this front rail is in now. I'll get underneath and I'll just loosely get everything just kind of snug. And then I will be able to set this back rail 
and hopefully everything lines up as well as this front rail did. So, moving along. Well, change plans. <laughs> they include this little welded on nut on this bar to be able to work up around the air suspension. And for the coil springs, you should be able to just put in the two carriage bolts. Well, there's a back brace here on the frame. I, there's just no way I can get up in there and get the nut on. And even if I did find a way to get the nut on, there's no way to be able to torque that down. There's just like this much space in there. So I'm going to have to use this and use the hex bolt to go down through the top so that I can torque this down. These aren't very strong, so I'll use a washer on here that's got some good ribs on it to really make sure to lock this in place because I'm afraid that if I really start torquing on this, it's just going to bend this. And then you also have to make sure there's no wires or brake lines or anything down there when this starts to move around that's not going to damage something. And since I'm working alone, I'm going to try to get up underneath there and hold this in place with a magnet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm pretty much finished with this. I just got to put the truck back together, put the fender wells in, put the wheels back on, put the spare tire back in. That's pretty simple, 15 minutes or so. But the instructions say a professional can do this in an hour. And a novice plan on an hour and a half. I am between a novice and a professional. I've been doing this kind of stuff my whole life. Maybe I don't do it every day for a living, but I do it a lot. And there is no way this is an hour <laughs> project for a pro. Even with two guys. I did it alone. Uh, it's tough to do alone. You really do need help, but you can do it by yourself. And it took me well over three hours. I'd say by the time I'm finished, from start to finish, you're four hours. So yeah, don't let them kid you. <laughs> Pretty much the same thing that I found out about the, the one that's flush mounted to the floor without these brackets. Uh, two guys, four hours to put it in with the bed still on it. And they said they would never do it again without taking the bed off. The way this is set up, you, you can't do it with the bed off. It has to be on. <laughs> so it's, it's a tough, tough project. So would I do it like this again? Or would I do the flush mount and take the bed off? I'd probably take the bed off. Because then you don't have these rails in the way. But this was a third of the cost of everything else that I would have had to do if I would have taken the bed off. But yeah, it's a big project. Uh, it's, it's no wonder they charge so much to do it. They quoted me 2,800 bucks at the dealership to put all this in with two guys. Yeah, they make their money. They make a little bit of money, but they work hard for it. But when it comes to uh, just how difficult the job is, Buggered up my fingernails, but didn't bust my knuckles. It's not that hard. It's just extremely time consuming. A lot of pieces and trying to work around all the frame and the chassis and everything. But I just love doing it myself and I love saving money. So it was worth it. Well, I got other projects coming up to put this whole trailer situation together. Um, putting lithium batteries in the trailer, putting in an inverter, going to do some custom wiring. So that's going to be exciting. So stay tuned, keep watching, <laughs> give me a like if you like what I'm doing. Thanks again, goodbye for now.